So, a year ago, last Thanksgiving, happy Thanksgiving, a year ago, last Thanksgiving, um, I had an unexpected visit from a wild animal, and this resulted in Thanksgiving rabbit. <laughs> so, yeah, what happened was uh, earlier that year, in March, I started keeping rabbits. Uh, so that was actually, um, I bought the first rabbit right before the pandemic was declared, and I bought the second one that weekend after it was declared. And then later I, I got a few more. Um, in, I think, August, I got another like five. Some lady was uh, selling off her entire... Uh, her entire lot of rabbits, all of, the, all of the rabbits from her farm or whatever, homestead, whatever you want to call it, I don't know. She said she was, they, they were moving into pigs and they don't like rabbits anymore. Whatever, okay. <coughs> and it was, uh, it was actually one of these rabbits that I got from, from this lady that Thanksgiving of 2020 was it, its last day on earth. Um, so I had kind of cobbled together a collection of uh, these janky cages and some cages that I had built and things that had come with some of the rabbits. And it's just kind of a random ass mess at this point. Um, and this guy, he, he was big. He, he was big. He's, uh, uh, a American chinchilla? Standard chinchilla? Yeah, he's a big boy. He's a big boy. And I did, he did sire, um, some, some children, so I, there's a future generation based on him, so that's, Although they don't seem to be able to make children of their own. Anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, so he's a big boy. And right after I got him, um, I just put him in this big cage that I had built. Um, ultimately for quail. It was The plan was to have quail in there. But the I only had three quail at the time, and I was keeping them inside, so it was fine, but, uh, right around, sometime in October, probably, um, I, I moved him to one of the jankier cages that I had picked up, and put the quail in, so that move was complete, and there was no longer quail in the house, and there you go, so he's in this little cage, um, it's not that little. Uh, it's, it was appropriately sized for him. He's, he's a big boy, and he made it look kind of small because he's huge. But um, it, he was able to move around easily. It's it's plenty big for <coughs> for this rabbit. And he, I would, yeah, let him out and things. So <coughs> the uh, the latching mechanism on this cage was. Uh, uh, pretty crap. Um, so night falls. It's probably seven o'clock or so. It's not that late, but it get at this time of year it gets dark. Five four thirty, five forty five, something like that. Like black dark. So it's been dark for a little while, but. It's not, it's not like the middle of the night. 
the color of the sky is like the middle of the night, but it's not like that. Um, and I'm in my, my bedroom, which is not that far away from, like, a big wall that, that's next to the backyard, so, and a big window on that wall. So, sounds from the backyard, I can hear from the bedroom very easily. But there's no door to the outside from the bedroom, which kind of becomes the problem in this story, I think, or part of the problem. Um, so I hear some, like, some weird, like, banging sounds. And the, all season, I had heard, heard at night, this rabbit would thump in the middle of the night. Just big, like, big thumps. And his name was Thumper, and he looked like Thumper. He was just, you know. So, yeah, he would thump. And I didn't think too much of it. And it wasn't every night. It was mostly when the moon was pretty full. And last Thanksgiving it was pretty close to a full moon. Um, the bobcat came around. It was the bobcat. It was probably the bobcat that he was thumping about all along. So now when my rabbits thump, I take a look outside and see what's happening. Um, yeah, so the bobcat comes around and his cage is just kind of like in the middle of the backyard, just kind of in the middle of the grass, right? So like I would, I would move his cage around um, so that like fresh grass would poke up through the bottom and it was lifted up, you know, a little bit off. Uh, the ground by a couple of bricks, so, you know, there was, he wouldn't be sitting in his own poo and all of this, but, like, fresh blades of grass could come up through there, and, and he had regular access to that, um, so this is just kind of out, right? and, you know, it's weighted, there's, there's things holding it, it's not going to blow away, it's, and it's protected from wind, there's, like, you know, wind breaks and things and he's got a little hutch in there that he can get into and like he's he's good right he's he's protected from the elements and it's it's considering that it's mostly made out of what is effectively trash <laughs> this is really old cage that i picked up for almost nothing from somebody that made it 40 years ago for 4-h for their kids um yeah, considering that it's made out of <coughs> really cheap scrap sorts of materials, uh, it's, this rabbit is doing it. He's living a good life, right? Um, but I hear this. I hear this sound, and I go out there, and the cage door is open, and the rabbit is just kind of sitting outside the cage. And at this point, I don't know uh, what the hell happened. And then I see a bobcat running along the fence line at the back. I'm like, oh, shit. But I'm barefoot. And right as the bobcat goes, I shout, and it, like, freaks him out, and he jumps over the wall, and, and I can hear him scurry off into, into the wash. And right as that's happening... That, that sound I made, which scared the bobcat, also scared the rabbit, and the rabbit runs across the yard over to very close to the same area where the bobcat just cleared the fence. Right, so, if the bobcat were to come back, I know this is his entry point. Right, this is his entry point. Because that's how they operate. They scout out the area. And they, they pretty much figure out, okay, on this side of this obstacle, this spot is the best. It's the safest. It's, I've got clear area. It's good. And then once they get up there, they're like, okay, yeah, this is the best from both sides. So they scout it out. So this is, this cat, I know, he's coming back. And he's coming back right here where this rabbit is. I know this. 
but there's like fucking stickers and cactus and rocks and shit, and I'm barefoot. So I kind of know where the rabbit went, but it's dark, so I'm not 100% sure. I kind of like, yeah, I kind of try go getting him, but also like going out there. One of the things I'm also doing is like shouting at the bobcat, trying to get him to go run away more, scare him off a little bit more, so that I'll be able to run inside, slip on some shoes as quickly as possible, and come back and get the rabbit. Well, that didn't work. I come back out and. Guess who's tackling the rabbit? Yeah. The bobcat. The bobcat. He's got the, like, wrapped around. They, they, this rabbit is so big, he's, the bobcat is not actually bigger than him. They're about the same size. So the, the bobcat has the rabbit, but it can't get out of the yard. It can't actually get away from me and have the rabbit at the same time. So I end up walking right up to the bobcat and like reaching down, like I'm like leaning over and I, my hand is right next to the bobcat's face. And the bobcat's like, oh fuck, and it lets the rabbit go and goes up the wall and he's, he's actually gone for a few minutes this time. But, the rabbit has a broken neck, broken shoulder, and he's, he's not going to make it. So, I put the rabbit down and I start processing him. And as I'm doing this, a little ways into it, I think I get maybe halfway through skinning it. And guess who shows up on the wall, watching me? Little bobcat. So I scare him off again, continue cleaning. And he showed up in the process of me cleaning this rabbit, which doesn't take that long. He showed up three times. Um, yeah. So I, I, had, uh, I had a rabbit that night. And it was a big rabbit, so I had a rabbit for a little while, for, for a little while. Later on, as I grew less afraid of this animal, the bobcat, saw him more, and kind of understood how terrified he was of me, um, there was a point uh, in January where... He came into the yard, and I just ran out, ran up to him, and he was already moving to to jump, and I just grabbed his neck, and I helped him out, and he, he went a little higher than he normally did with that jump, but, because, yeah. So, I, <coughs> I kind of threw the bobcat over the fence, out of the yard. And I haven't seen him since then. I do hear the rabbits thumping, but I have not seen him in the yard since then. Or scouting out the area behind the house and the wash. Which I had seen him before that point doing that. Um, and now I get different animals. Now I get owls. I get There's a family of owls that... They like to harass the quail and the rabbits. Um, they can't do anything. They can't get in there. But three great horned owls. Um, yeah. Yeah. I was surprised a little bit the other morning. Um, it was just starting to get light. And uh, I like just opened my eyes and you know, looked out the window. And there's this, just this big great horned owl. And it just lands right on top of the quail cage. And my, my window's open a little bit. So, like, right then I'm just like, really? And, and it, like, <laughs> flies away. 
pretty much all of these animals at this point know my voice because uh, yeah so I can most of the time just kind of like say a couple words from inside my bedroom and they'll leave temporarily they'll come back later but they'll leave for um, yeah. yeah that was an adventure